And welcome back, boys and girls. You have been waiting for a few minutes, and you're about to be rewarded with the first game of Sandhawk here in PEL. Not gonna lie, wait. not gonna lie. Personally, like I'm super honored to be commentating the very first PEL competitive Sandhawk game. Now, me and you, we both have decent bit of Sandhawk experience competitively yep. from PUBG Mobile the mobile counterpart. Um, so we're a little bit aware, and hey look, a lot of people might know uh, Sanhog and, and, and of course, but we'll get into, of course, this is the overall standings after three games. Tornado Energy still at the very tippity top yeah. of the mountain this time around, 31 points, followed very closely by four Angry Kids by 27. Unity was that last uh, Miramar game, got themselves a nice few juicy positions back in 20, this, uh, 20 uh, actually no, in third position was 26 points, one point behind four Angry Kids, and then you just keep going down. Four, uh, inside games, actually, last game, they've been really consistent on, on yep. the angle, but Miramar seemed like that was maybe not quite their map, like, and a little bit of a disappointing performance for them. When you talk about kind of disappointing performances, again, it's only day one, but thus pilots like as i said they've had last two games two out of three games have had zero points yet they're still on nine points in total which means that you kind of got to ask yourself that if they had have been a bit consistent it, that it would have kind of you know they'd be in a lot better position but as i said it's only game one this is sanhok welcome to the jungle baby we've got fun and games here we go Playing pretty central, even though that's not really important because it's such it's a small map. You can, you can drop where you want everywhere. every single yeah, time. Yeah. So that's going to be completely fine. A few teams going to be shifting actually to the eastern side. That's going to be uh, Unity and also inside games. But I want to see which will be the team, the first team in PEL ever to go for boot camp Anarchy here. <laughs> well, quick math. Oh, good. Boot camp. Incontest incontested. So two, two of the biggest, uh, two of the most popular drops to spots to drop, at least from a classic game point of view, is boot camp and paradise resort. We've seen those two areas only contested by one team each. Inside games for paradise resort, and quick math for boot camp. Uh, we also know that uh, down in the southwest side is also very popular to land. Yeah, you can just team like shift a lot and just spread a lot pretty easily. Katana actually going to be surrounded by a few teams. Got to be very careful. One thing I'm not happy about like at all, and I'm going to call okay, them out. Okay, okay, okay. What okay. are you doing for angry kids? You can split on Miramar, Erango. That's completely fine. It's a big map. You can reposition and try and make up for that early game split. When you split, when you drop early split on Sanhawk, Sanhawk yeah. it's a completely different game where it you is. have teams that are going to come from every single position on the map. Exactly. Now, we look at this first circle. It's actually a nice start because it's nothing too north, south, east, west. It's very central. And yes, we know Sanhawk is a smaller map, so the circles are going to contain a lot of these areas. But as I said, it's very central. Mm. Katana, you said they dropped on Ruins. Yep. Uh, Ruins does have some actually pretty decent loot despite being it a does. small, a small it does. position. It's got insane loot in that main temple. Exactly. And that's why some teams go for it after it is pretty like complicated actually to shift away from it because it's just open areas and water. So that does slow you down. So if a team does scout you, you might get in trouble. And I said it, some teams are around there. Exactly. Those bridge compounds can play a big part, um, especially in the city um, bridge compound areas as well. But boot camp... It looks beautiful. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? It looks torn up to pieces, as you'd expect, because it's so popular to drop. So it looks like it's had a lot of action over its history. Let's quick math look to add to that. I mean, that's like the hot drop of Sanhok. So, of course, it's going to be messed up. I talked yeah. about um, Paradise Resort earlier. Um, only one team is going to drop there, too. That's going to be inside games. And it's really interesting that for the first game where you can already make research because you don't know where teams are going to drop, they actually split pretty even over the entire map. So that's really, really surprising here. I can see that four uh, Angry Kids actually getting back together. 3D Max, they got uh, Pinan. I think Pinan is one of the better positions to it hold. Is, not, it not is. for loot, but just to hold and to avoid teams from actually rotating efficiently. Yep. I think it's so, so good because they can shut down the rotations from Katana and from the likes of also Tornado Energy. So I think that that's really good for them. So now Tornado Energy, you're looking to possibly get the first... Frag in Santa competitive. Oh. PEL as Azarin does get knocked down by example. And now Maxizor comes in and gets a return knockdown as example is going to be fragged out. So the first frag of Sandhawk 
PL competitor goes over to Katana. Didn't I say playing split is not yep. rewarding on Sun Hawk? So that's where the teams are going to have to try and work on that and improve because we'll have a bunch of Sun Hawk games uh, over the course of the, this phase three in Purim. So they got their. And you got your fair share of like moments to try yep. and like prove and learn from it. So you're not expecting like flawless games this first one, this first time around. Players gonna get used to it, learn their favorite like drop in locations where the other teams yep. drop, and learn how to rotate. That's gonna be the most important thing because rotations can get denied really early on because the circle uh, is so dominating on exactly. phase one. Ex exactly, Max. And look, these teams are, are not inexperienced when it comes to Sam Hawk, right? In general, because they, sure they have a level of experience, but when you're in the competitive mindset, the focus is Miramar and Arangle, right? Mm -hmm. So working as a team, getting those positions as a team, holding those spots as a four-man team is so important. And on a new map from a competitive setting that Sandhawk is, it's going to take a bit of time. So we're going to learn the kind of meta within reason, the, the drop spots that these teams like to um, land in and, uh, and how they play these trains. Last crew, you can see them on the west section and the north section doing a three-man split. Uh, I don't know where the other member is. Did they? Did he die or something? I'm not too sure. But they're going completely around to go up north, and I think that's actually a pretty smart uh, kind of rotation from them because there's no teams there. But they don't know that. If there are teams there, they might actually shut down and get in a little bit of a pickle as you do have a loot crate coming on through from the heavens from Stella. And they're going to get an AWM. Unfortunately, on Sunhawk, the AWM is not that great out of a weapon bolt, compared to Erangel and Miramar. Yeah, bolt, action, bolt actions in, in Sunhawk aren't as prevalent slash not even like popular, but just not as useful because you have so much kind of uh, greenery, so many trees that just bolt action, long range shots, they're just not really going to pay off. Whereas as a team, you kind of want to be ag aggressive. Like in my opinion, Sandhawk is the, is the map that probably complements aggressive teams the most. The likes mm -hmm. of quick math, the likes of inside games. When you are as a team aggressive, you're just going to flush your opponents out so quickly that they won't know what hit them. Three-man parties are what's going to happen all the true, game. True, true. Like, right now, we only lost one member, which is really surprising, actually, one on Sandhawk. One player, yeah. But in the next few minutes, especially when phase two starts, that's when you're going to see it go downhill really, really quickly. But that's why, in my opinion, aggressiveness pays, plays an even bigger compliment because mm -hmm. part of the reason why teams get third parties is because they wait out um, initiating a bit of a, a team fight. They, 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 they wait it out, right? Because when you're in Miramar and Arangle, you have that time, whereas in Sandhawk, you don't have the time. Yeah. So you have you, you got to kind of think less but act more in some way. Um, and then when you can get that squad right quickly, there's a there's a far higher chance that you're not going to get third party. Hardship, one team on the very edge of the circle. I think edge of the circle on Sunhawk, that, that is even better than doing it on Irangu and Miramar. Uh, the reason why is you yeah. avoid the fight and yep. you just follow the blue zone. You might get gatekeep that sometime. That's the gatekeeping is a little done. bit more harder yep. on Sunhawk because you said it earlier, like you got a lot of trees, a lot of uh, terrain to work with, a lot of compounds, just like one or two or three building compounds to work with. So you can easily just like rotate from small compound to compound. That's what um, DOS, Pilot, and actually um, Heartshift are doing right now. Team Unity, they're a team that dropped split. They got back together, which I really enjoy. That's what we have to yep. do on, um, on Sunhawk. I think they understood that. And they got a really good location to work with. And the circle is about to close up. Where is phase two going to take us? So all of these teams bar last crew actually inside circle, Ooh. but it does shift definitely more central. Again, this this, this circle is actually quite normal. Nothing super crazy. I like it because it, it's giving these teams a level of kind of comfortability, especially all the teams that are inside the circle where they don't really have to move anywhere. So it's going to be actually a rather passive game on Sandhawk where people kind of expected, and even myself, I expected the action to hit us a, a little bit earlier. Mm. I see a few teams are actually trying to rotate early. I talked about earlier Hearts, Shift, and also yeah. Dos Pilot. They were on the edge of the circle. They still are. They're so are, close to each other. And they're so close to each other. That's the thing. Oh, right now, they're on the top of this mountain. I don't think they have any kind of information. Maybe. Well, Lips. I, I see Dos. They're Dos looking Pilots their way. Are, but they're kind of tuned to split, whereas Heart Shift are actually a lot closer together. I think that Heart Shift had no idea. Like, when you look at Dos, they're looking in their direction, and I think they did get that info. So information is what gives you a big advantage in those oh. fights. Oh, here it is. What's he gonna do? Mike spots him out. Just get one knockdown onto member Dos Pilots doesn't quite secure the frag, but Lipson returns fire with the knockdown onto Mike. The high ground is actually going over to Dos Pilots, so that's pretty good for them. Just get another kill flashed out. Going to try and go for the jump shot. 
does avoid a few bullets of the M4 from Lipson. DOS Pilot doing pretty good in the process. They did lose, unfortunately, CTRKN. Does that have a grenade out? Actually, oh, we kept doesn't have a weapon in his hand. He will be shooting right into the tree, not working out quite well. And the grenade will actually roll back on top of him. Very unfortunate, DOS Pilot do have a nice angle to work with. They're going to try and flush that on top of Miho, but be careful in the distance. That QBU is going to be really efficient, I think, on this map, actually. A good DMR to work with. And there's another angle. Niana's looking for the split engage. Gets another flush. That's going to let DOS pilot, one pilot remaining. And uh, still, unfortunately, a lot of members going out this early on. That's going to be still leaving hard shift. It was only two members, and DOS pilot was only one. So oh, both teams coming out yeah. losers of that skirmish. Okay, so now we're hitting the under 10 minute mark. Tornado energy wreaking havoc on to Havoc oh, and the rest of four angry kids as four angry kids get eliminated first squad wipe in under 10 minutes this is personally why i absolutely love sun Hawk, max yeah it's just hard to follow you're like okay which team gone out okay we just yep. lost four angry kids what's gonna be the next move katana can slowly closer to tornado energy they are pretty low couple of grenades. Man compot, low couple of grenades is all it's gonna mm -hmm. take max that's all it's going to take. Actually, when you check it out, Tornado Energy, they did take this compound away. I guess it was from Four Angry Kids. Uh, but Katana, they saw that fight, and that's the thing. Three-man parties, they're always going to happen. You pick a fight, everyone on the map almost knows where you are, and they're going to try and get a little bit involved. Uh, no, true. true trying to still true, recover true, true. from that skirmish. Now, what I like about Katana is they're kind of surrounding this compound, but the risky thing is that they could actually be picked off one by one if they're not too careful. They've got to make sure that they use the angles that they have as a team and the communication to their advantage, not peek too far out. So now it's just going to slow down a little bit. There's no reason really to force it. Yep. Um, they're both in, in a circle. distance, teams are pretty far away, so and also well. they're in a circle. So there's nothing really forcing this engage to happen. So it will happen eventually, just not quite now. Yeah. Uh, going to go over to Rewop. Rewop actually really high up north. They're very close actually to uh, Last Crew. Might have a kind of similar situation that we had with DOS and also uh, Heart Shift. They're actually talking about DOS and Heart Shift. They avoided the fight and they just separated. Just don't want to give their mm. um, their team position away. So I think that was actually a smart call there. Just trying to lose a little bit less in this first San Hawk game. Engage for on through. Katana actually going to be losing one of their first members right off the bat. And actually Tornado Energy, they're all coming out victorious up against the Storm. From Katana, Katana only having Max's all remaining, and that's going to be turned into a one. Uh, actually, no, it's going to be a 2v3. As I say, that you also have Kamka on the side. 2v3 scenario, grenade coming in on through from Max's all. Will it connect on Mailman or Alia GG? Or maybe both? You're not too sure, but no, completely out of the building. Not going to work out at all whatsoever. Max's all. Still, here it is. Kamka doing some work. No, now nah, this in. is what Kamka needs to do. Great push coming out from him. Mailman gets the knockdown onto Maxi or the Mac Katana down to one player. Down to one player, as just said. Can't come push on the side. Mailman gonna come out of the building and he does get Tornado Energy out in now 15th position. Um, so, uh, yeah, there it is. Katana, unfortunately, out. Not Tornado Energy. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's cool. I, I got that, I got that. But see, like Katana, as I said, Katana initially had a great angle mm -hmm. of, of information, but when you don't either make that push as a team, yeah, synergy was lacking a bit there. It, it, it just didn't pay off because they got kind of, as I said, they got taken down one by one, Max. And they didn't really seem to have the grenades connecting in the right way and Tornado Energy move on. That's two squad wipes from Tornado Energy. So already their kill feed is popping off in this game as we are down to 14 teams, 47 players alive. Yeah, that synergy is going to be really important for yourself because it's just so close quarter that yep. staying stacked together and like focusing targets as a four-man team is going to be that much more yeah. rewarding compared to Irangle or uh, Iram Miramar, or Miramar, Miramar where you want to yep. try and uh, like hold different angles to so try and avoid teams from rotating. Here, rotations sure are important, but it's mostly your uh, micro mechanics that are going to be like prevailing yeah, on Sandhawk. Exactly, exactly. As Rewop and Last Crew, they actually kind of split up after initially coming together, <clears> and one member of Last Crew was actually taken out by Rewop, but Rewop are getting closer to the likes of YMCA, even inside games. But you know what ha doesn't change in compared to between Sandhawk, Miramar, and Arangle? Roads. Roads are still as dangerous <laughs> as ever, so you hold on to the compounds inside, uh, by the side of the road, you can pick off a couple of these players. Mm. Roads are always dangerous yeah. in every single map. You've got to be as cautious as possible. Uh, quick math. Uh, this is mainly how you do defend compounds on Sandhawk because they're like mainly focused around roads and you're going to yep. try and put one member in one 
building in compounds just to for hold like the four angles of the compound itself. So I think that's a great move coming out from Quick Math. Definitely, you can see they have some experience with Sandhawk and probably did a bunch of scrims or a bunch of uh, casual games for themselves. One thing we sort of got to know about Sunhawk is that high ground, despite you always think that high ground is always going to be really rewarding, it can also be very punishing if you deal, unfortunately, with snakes. Like Sunhawk and snakes, they, they make one. <laughs> always. Sunhawk oh, and wait, snakes wait, wait, wait. come together. Uh -oh. What? He's finishing his job! Hard shift! They finally found, okay. find the last member of DOS Pilot and DOS Pilot out in 14th position. <laughs> Come to finish your work. There you I'm go. not gonna lie, he was so <laughs> snake that I kind of didn't even notice that. But either way, this now action is starting to kick off. I said Rewap was getting closer to YMCA, and they did, and they're now starting to pay the prices. Turbo Banani with the grenade secures the frag right. on the EU Wong, but what can Mage Bane do? YMCA playing the split engage, I think is really good. I'm trying to deny a little bit of that. Oh, protection, headshot coming on through, but there it is. Guess who from Rewap actually trying to get from the lower section? I think that Codruity has that info. And here it is, a little bit more spray action coming on through was the M4 from Guess Who. Rewap only having one member remaining there on this side of the map. Guess Who still, you just get lasers Great back job, and forth. Great job, Guess Who all the same. There are so many angles of fire up for MCA, that's why they're doing so yep. well. And they do flush out Rewap in a 13th position. Yep. Playing split in this situation works. It's just now they've got to try and regroup a little bit more. Try and raise back up. But look at Quick Math now. They're going oh, to no. possibly look to join in on the party. Three man party. My God, I'm Dr. Smiley Face here, and I'm enjoying every single second second of the <laughs> Sandhog action as Apula gets taken down by Jubzik. He could boo right there. Jubzik getting the upper hand. Doesn't quite flush it right now, unfortunately. There it is. They're going in without getting the information first, and that's not looking too good for Quick Math. Turbo Barna. A little bit closer there, still in the blue zone, taking a little bit of tick damage. We're going to go over to also Unity, picking their own fight with last Ooh, Molotov. Yeah, a few Molotov. Molotov is actually good to stop pushes and slow down the yep. engage in Sandhawk, so that's something that's going to be a little bit more dominant. Here it is. Back over to Quick Map. Unfortunately, oh, the blue zone is no. going to have the upper hand on them, just going to try and slow down the engage. Only going to be having Pell remaining on this side, and he's still taking the tick damage. He's going to try and res back up as fast as he possibly can, but you are in phase four. The tick damage is increased quadruple the amount, and that's probably going to be the, amount, the end, unfortunately, of Quick Math. Diggory does get knocked away. Still, unfortunately, having the high ground, as I said, high, like, as I said earlier, having the high ground like Unity here can be a little bit scary. But YMCA, YMCA Esports get eliminated. Quick Math. Um, Whoa. do get eliminated. Actually, no, Pelty's still actually going, in fairness, just about, but inside games have hold on, held on to that compound absolutely fantastically. Now, Ferrari Breach looking to breach onto the side of inside games. Inside games, yeah, they have this compound on the very edge, but unfortunately, the zone is shifting away from it, so they have to yep. make a decision. They're going to face up against the likes of Ferrari Breach, oh, their last crew, they did lose uh, Aka skills earlier, and you're gonna have yep. Rip and Jap available. They can try and res him back up, they do have the lip of a hill to work with, they got a little bit of defense, no one really behind them, they're pretty safe for now. Uh, gonna have to try and take that into account. Oh my god, that shift on the circle going completely over to LXG. Completely, they have one of only two compounds on their own. Now, Stellar actually have a solid spot to get into compound, but <laughs> we'll talk about that later on. Either way, Quick Math do get eliminated. Ferrari Breach, as I said, they're breaching the edge of this circle, but Oko got knocked down outside the circle. Washout did as well. There, Two of them are going to get taken out. Sen Hicks on the side of Inside Games is going to lose his life, leaving Pixlix on his own. Going to try and use the forestry, the rocks, to his advantage, as Educaz does have the high ground on him. Yeah, it is a 2v1 fight right now. Here it is, a little yep. bit of laser action and instantly gets flushed out inside game. Ninth position overall. Two last games for them, for them unfortunately, a little bit disappointing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Irangle cool. seems like their map. Yeah. But anyways, back to the action. They got actually this really good location. This is a spawn location on Sandhawk. They got it under control. It is pretty hard to defend because it's in the dip and you don't got a lot of, like, there's only pillars you're working with. So a little bit scary for them. LXG once again, not in any kind of like harm. They are away from it as much as they possibly can. But here it is, Hearts out, uh, Heart shift, sorry. And then in eighth position, he was last member. Um, picking a full man team is not going to quite work out for him. Only uh, seven teams remaining. Yeah, seven teams remaining as we were down to 23 players. I said Stellar had a good position. They did take down Hardshift as we saw, which gives them a little bit more freedom. Milky Way are a bit spread out, to be honest. It's kind of like 2-1-1, one, and one, but now mm -hmm. Izum is getting closer to the rest of his team. Yeah. The good thing for them is they kind of hold a, a, a bit of high ground there, but Stellar, they can just move into this compound. But all the while, last crew trying to make their way through, going up very close against the side of Unity. They got one flush on orange, instantly taken out of the picture. Yep. And you have another snoopic 
Snake's going to be remaining. Going to try and take it 1v3. Once again, Snake's can pull off insane clutch moves. And he did have the information. He heard the footsteps from Rip, AK so Skill, and also Jack One. He's inside circle. Yeah, he is in circle too. But so is uh, Last Crew, to be honest. They're, very, they're in the circle. They're completely yeah, fine. Yeah, but they could get third party by Milky Way, right? So that's the thing. This is where the third party comes in. The snake that can come in and cause a bit of an upset. All the while, 3D Max taking down oh, a member awesome. of Ferrari Breach outside circle. Inside kind of one of those compounds as we're down to seven teams. 19 players left standing in this last game of the day. And the first game is Sam Hawk and PEL competitive. New picks. He's still not back in off of that fight with last crew, uh, but though slowly can see in the back Milky Way, they're going to be lurking up on top of Snoop picks. AK skills. I think they do get the information on them. Mm, they know. They, they know, know there's somebody there. there. Yeah, but like they once know. again, snakes. Like late yep. game, that is what can turn around the entire course of the game. Okay, snakes cannot turn over the course of the entire game. You get instantly, instantly lasered down. Uh, and now they make another way. fight with Milky Way. Oh. Gotta be careful. AK Grenade. skills does get knocked down. Izu now going to secure that frag. Just going to try and grenade on through, but here it is. Last crew, they have the information. They're not going to try and pick that fight. LXG, there's still four members remaining. Same for Milky Way. They have the two, like, compounds. Yep. You know, I wouldn't really call what Milky Way has a compound. It's not really one. No. Um, but they can try and hold it. The circle is shifting away from the compound of LXG, so, so their time is counted before they have to try and shift in circle. And uh, Milky Way Ooh. finally getting involved with another fight. With Last Crew. Last Crew in a little bit of a split. He's in the blue zone. Here Great it is. Let's get one knocked down. Dippy! You're trying to get back to the safety of his team. He got one knock. That's what he was looking for. He doesn't want to get overzealous. He doesn't yeah, want to exactly. overstay his welcome. And uh, trying to get back to his team because they are still pretty central, but still very split. Rip should possibly be able to get revived, but no, no. Jap is going to have to be careful. Careful, he's not going to want to go for that revive. In fairness, he's going to possibly look to get fragged. As Austrian does get knocked down. Great Ooh. take him out. Jap one coming out on top in a 1v2 situation. Milky Way, what are you doing? Can you try and rest back up Rip now? That's the that's the true question. Mm. Like, try and push out the kills. There you go. Kills exactly. just in case you are the last man standing on your side. Here it is. Oh, a little bit of snipe action no. in the distance. Distance. Jab taken out by Izum of Milky Way. Now down to three teams remaining. That's going to be Milky Way, LXG, and also Stellar in an epic showdown at the very end of this first PEL Sandhawk game ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever. ever. I'm in a world. But um, either way, LXG and Stellar, they both have to move away from these compounds. And they both kind of have high ground. But what that makes it is it actually makes it even as far as kind of like they're both on the same level of each other. <laughs> so they're able to kind of peek and sh shoot off a couple of shots off as LXG are now making their way into the circle. But they're a little bit split. This is what we're looking for. The end game, most of the time, from Sanhok is going to be played on the edge of yep. the circle. As we do have Milky Way, we're going to be losing. Zoom actually knocked away. A little bit far from his team. Would be surprised if he does get res back up unless the smokes come on through. Here it is. A nice rotation from LXG despite not having the high ground. I think that here, Stella has a really good point of pressure. Well, but at this oh, stage of the game... When you have to move out of the high ground, that's always a bit riskier. Mm -hmm. So LXG have actually made a four call, and I actually think it's paying off for them. It is definitely paying off for them. Stella, look at that snipe in action coming through for the QBU. Can we finish it off right now? Oh. It is. He's picking fights left and right with Milky Way, and also Stella. As I say that, unfortunately, we're going to be using uh, Mon Man from Stella. Going to be putting them down now to only three members. Going to be a 4v3, if he, uh, now 3v2, uh, 4v2v2. And LXG going to be dictating the game as they have that huge power spike in terms of like just having still four members would, at this stage, which is very scary. Would just not, would just wait not go for the revive on the fuse? Is that, you know, he's right by his side as X team does get knocked down by off string as he's down to six health himself. Is he going to be able to survive? He's going to try and get that med kid off as Mans is going to try and keep them under a bit of a level of pressure. All the while, Stellar did get taken down. So we're down to two teams, four players left. 2v2 situation. The zone, and here it is. Unfortunately, that will be going over to Milky Way, securing the first game on Sunhawk here in the PL Contenders nice. Phase 3. Absolutely awesome. I didn't think they had the advantage because the compound that they had is not really a compound, yeah. and they were open to taking pressure, but just teams were not focusing them down, really surprisingly. And I think that the smokes that they used at that stage actually yep. slowed down that engage on top of Milky Way and allowed yep. them to like just run away with the win. Exactly. Like I, I'm definitely going to be interested and curious as to what these players actually think of now Sandhawk as a map that they've experienced it from competitive sense. So I'm personally going to look to reach out to a couple of these teams and see how they felt. I hope they enjoyed it. As I said, personally, I did because, like, you know, 
they're they're a little bit quicker matches, a little bit kind of faster pace, a bit more enjoyable in my eyes. And it's a, it's, a ch- it's a change of pace yeah. from that point of view. Um, a couple of these teams pulling out some absolute standout performances, as I said, LXG and Milky Way in particular. Um, and then even Tornado Energy, they got two squad wipes in that compound. And so they fended off for themselves very strongly. Yeah, there were a lot of BDPs this game. They were yeah. coming out. And it's just the first game, as I said, these teams are going to slowly get used to what was actually happening as you go over the highlights to try and like take into into uh, us a little bit more of a Sunhawk action. That's what we're looking for. And uh, that was one of the really big early fights that happened. DOS Pilot versus Shift. But I think that... No one really came out victorious, as I said that earlier. Just one member remaining on both sides, just split away, tried to avoid the fight, trying to get better positioning. But both teams, unfortunately, failed a little bit later down the line. True, but I, I do think Sandhawk is one of the maps that you, you mentioned it, where you can kind of survive on your own as a one-man snake army mm-hmm. for quite a, a, a long period of time. Um, and, then, and then you're able to kind of push your way through. So, yes, even though early game team fights aren't advisable, if you can secure those... Frags are getting points, and you're 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 surviving for as long as possible. But this is the, this was the second um, squad wipe that Tornado Energy got in this game. It was onto Katana. Yeah, and here it is. That was the last member. Then yeah. end your job. Heart shift getting that kill on Dos Pilot, and that was when the high ground was starting to become really like starting to dictate Major the course of the player. game and yeah. being a really big factor of the core of the entire shifts. There it is. Another fight that happened. That was uh, actually I, I think the Quick math is actually really good. It was the situation that was given to them, and uh, that was YMCA. You said earlier they were going to they were getting involved with a lot of fights, and that was then it, here it is. Quick math. They were in the still in the back there, getting a few nice shots. But just there was so much action. Even in the highlights, it's like too much action going on. The comedy follow was everything. <laughs> yeah, Ferrari Breach did absolutely solid job to eliminate inside games. And at that point, we had gotten down to like eight teams with only like about twenty or so players left alive. As Ferrari Breach again. I, I'm actually pretty pretty impressed with how they've been today so far. Same with uh, the likes of Rewap. I really think they've pulled out some solid performances in the first day. As I said, it's only day one. There's a lot of games to come in this group stage. We're going to have, obviously, Group B. What are Group B going to be able to do on Sandhawk? So it's going to be very curious. But all the while, last crew, they were looking to push out. That's when the teams were trying to get into the dip because, as you said earlier, yeah. like the center of the circle was towards um, a valley, and everyone had to rotate downhill. And you said that rotating downhill was that much more punishing. And the only yeah. team that didn't do that was LXG, but they still didn't take it because the smokes from Milky Way was so good. But that was a very scary zone for all the teams involved. But that's why Stellar didn't survive because they didn't move down the hill early enough. So that's part of the reason why it was actually it. beneficial for LXG. Um, in, in, in that last game. Um, so it was really good stuff. But this is point standings from this last game of the day in the first game of Sam Hogg and the PEL contenders. Four Angry Kids, the only team getting zero points. As I said, four Angry Kids, even though they did yeah. regroup, they did pay the price of like dropping split. Yeah, I said it, you're going to exactly. regret it, and they regret it even though they were as a four-man squad. Now, this is what we're looking for, the tippity top of the mountain here in the leaderboards. Milky Way, first position with seven kill points. And actually, uh, not the kill leaders. It's going to be Tornado Energy because they picked yeah. actually two huge fights. One especially against Katana, scoring them four kills. Yeah, two squad wipes, eight kills. Great job by them. Really well played. Comp off from Tornado or Energy MVP. to kill leader. Getting four kills alone. But, it, you know, not super standout because you still had Celis from Stellar. You had Melman from also from Tornado Energy in fairness. And Peltage from Quick Math also getting three kills. Back to the damage dealers, Beamy from Stella. But we're wow. not really surprised because they were like kind of applying a lot of pressure on a lot of the teams actually from that high ground after they, as you said earlier, they did suffer that rotation at the end. Uh, then yep. Compot once again, 360 because he had four kills. Uh, so not really surprising. No scope. <laughs> I'm actually pretty proud of that, to be honest. You can't see snipers, so there's no scopes in Sandhawk. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's why no scope. Oh, yeah, exactly. So this is a head to head between Compot and. Beamy 360 against the 548 damage. We love your own joke. Four okay. kills from Compot. See, again, that 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 damage to kill ratio is always going to be prevalent. I'm all for like getting damage great. You're aiding your team and potentially getting a frag, but if you can't secure that kill, you're not securing points. That was just an absolutely awesome first Sunhog game, as you said earlier. Sunhog every single yep. day of the phase three. Now check out the overall standings. Who's in the tippity top of the mountain is going to be Tornado Energy with 39 points. Yep. Not a huge lead on like Milky Way, no, but Milky Way and Tornado Trigger on the rest of the teams. 
slowly creates a little bit of a, of a pretty big gap. It, well, yeah, like at least it, for one it's, day, it's 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 not as as big as as it potentially could be because I think every single team has had a, a solid game other than DOS Pilots, which is the reason why they're in last place. Last crew haven't had a good start today. Even though I said Rewop have actually put in some good performances, I, I think potentially they have a lot more potential. It, they just haven't converted that into actual points so far. Um, but 3D Max lying in 10th place. Again, like 3D Max, their team that I've seen them come in, in 10th place, but then by the end of day two, day three or so and so forth, they'll find themselves in fifth place. So I'm, I'm kind of not surprised that 3D Max are there after day one. Well, so you've got still 24 matches for this group. Yep. So you have to be in the top eight. That's what you're looking for. Anyways, the next few matches tomorrow, same time, same place here on the PUBG channel here, the PEL underscore esports channel. Don't hesitate to hit that follow button to know when we do go live tomorrow. And it will be, of course, at 7 p.m. Central European Summer Time. Uh, the schedule for tomorrow in terms of maps uh, that we're going to get, we're going to get again. a wrangle, two Miramars, and one Sandhawk. So two Ooh, Miramar games, baby. rotations, a little bit punishing. And I think it was going to be really fun to see how they can try and redeem themselves on Miramar. Exactly. And uh, just a lot of epic more action in Phase 3 coming our way. I, I'm just so happy we had to open uh, with Sandhawk. That was so much fun. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it again. I'll be looking to get a bit of feedback on the players to see what they thought of it. Yeah, just trying to talk over with the players a little bit. Thank you so, so much for checking out here Phase 3 Day 1. It was an absolute honor to bring you the action that you all love and deserve at home. My name was Maxman. Going to be joined by my big boy Imperium here on my left. Thank you so much. See you all tomorrow.